and they say there's nothing good on TV anymore. In today's video, we set our sights on the new NECA Toys Nightmare on Elm Street accessory set. Build terrifying scenes from the Nightmare on Elm Street movies with this deluxe accessory set. These iconic pieces are the perfect size to use with your 7-inch figures. Okay, so there's a bunch of stuff that we can measure off. The first thing we're going to do is measure to the very top of the tallest accessory, and that is the Freddy Worm. Stopping the Ultra Megatron right there. There we go. From the bottom to the top, there is some assembly required. I'll show you that in a second. The Freddy Worm stands at a very impressive 12.4 inches tall. Now, you think of that in scale to six scale figures. Freddy Worm is about the size of a regular just a little over a regular sized six scale figure. Translating that to centimeters, let's go ahead and do that now, 31.6 centimeters tall. The Freddy TV set is a little bit more trickier because it's something that's gonna be mounted to a wall, so I'm not gonna do the measurements for that. I am, however, gonna take the measurements for one of the street signs. The signs are roughly about the same. The nightmare one is maybe just a little bit shorter, but certainly not a whole, but not by a whole lot. So I'm going to measure it just to the top of this one. And this lamp post is 10.3 inches in height centimeters. Yes, I'll be able to do that for you. 26.3 centimeters tall. There are a few things that require some assembly when you get them out of packaging. We'll kind of go through each one of them because each one of them really requires something to be put on top. I guess the largest one being the Freddy Worm. The assembly for required for this one when you get it out of packaging is the flooring is separate from the rest of the worm. Um, it is just attached by a peg. I might say a rather difficult peg to immediately put in first. It seems to get a little bit looser and easier to do it every single time that you're doing it. You probably only need to do it once though, but for my reviewing, of course, I'm gonna have to show you guys a couple of times, um, you know, with the starting of the review and all that sort of stuff. Let's have a look at the flooring, then we'll have a look at the Freddy Worm, a really neat recreated flooring there from the dream sequence of Nightmare on Elm Street Part Three, The Dream Warriors. Of course, Freddy's worm will change slightly to what it's originally designed as. Oh boy, some coloring had to be certainly changed to a more greener color because its initial coloring was a little bit, well, more suggestive. But the flooring is rather nice. You can see all the floor grading here, the, uh, the actual uh, grain to the wood itself. There's a few extra little panels of wood and you can see how Freddy's worm would have just ripped its way through the flooring, causing all these kind of uh, disjointed sectional pieces of wood sort of lifting up from themselves. Now, like I said, the assembly for this, it's pretty straightforward. This is all hollow, by the way, inside, but it's made of a dense plastic. You're going to take it, and the back end of the worm is going to go back here. Also, a good way, a good rule of thumb as well is because he's, his head is facing this way, you need a little bit extra more flooring this way to compensate for the fact that he may be a little bit more top heavy. Now, when you push it on, I, I found it helped just to kind of wiggle it a little bit, eventually getting it completely firmly footed, firmly planted into the flooring. And if you do it right, you shouldn't see very many, if not any, gaps really where you've connected the two. Other assembly, don't worry, we'll kind of go a little bit more into detail on these guys, but uh, some assembly also required for the individual lamp posts. They have their own separate stands. When you get them out of packaging, you have to just take the stands and put them to the bottom of the street sign. The same thing can be said for the nightmare sign. And then TV set Freddy, you're, the last thing you only want to do is just pop his head, or take his head, and pop it into this open hole here. That's the only uh, assembly that's required for all the sets. So really, each one of the things does require something to be put together, and then you're good to go. Okay, that being said, let's have a look at the details here of these awesome accessories. Never thought I'd ever see the day when I would see a 
Worm Freddy make its way to plastic. And then sure enough, this is what we've gotten here. It's a really neat recreation of the very terrifying looking Worm Freddy that made its way into Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3. As best as I could possibly get this going here. Um, yeah, it's... Even in its off coloring here, it is sort of suggestive. It's not really one one way to work around that, other than the fact that they just they painted it green in the movie. The head sculpt is quite good, actually. Unfortunately, he doesn't have anything moving in the mouth. You can't open and close his mouth, nor can you move his eyes. It's not really that's something I would certainly expect. Um, he does have, it has some posability. It's actually got a really big ball joint attaching to the head. So the head can tilt back, back and forth, up, down, and you can rotate it all the way around. Um, it's got some coloring, more of kind of a slimier swamp green. You can see there's a little bit of red there down the side and some additional blue sort of veins added to the majority of Freddy's face. Now, scale wise, I have to come clean, unfortunately. I didn't, I couldn't find Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 Freddy. I knew I put him away somewhere. I don't know whereabouts I put him. So in the meantime, we're just going to have to make do. This is Freddy's Revenge Freddy. Ultimate Freddy's Revenge Freddy from Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2. He's roughly about half the size. A standard 7-inch figure is about half the size of Worm Freddy here. Go ahead and move that out of the way. Uh, other than, yeah, of course, the very suggestive nature of the uh, the sculpting of this. It's a fantastic looking piece. I kind of wish that it could have had some posability, but I know that would have uh, caused some problems where, say, if he even had had a sectional joint right here where you could have been able to bend the worm down, bend the worm, say, at a, at a half cut here. I think it would have affected its uh, stability. Uh, NECA could have easily... I guess put a hinge in there, but it's a it's a sphere shape. Well, it's a cylinder shape. It'd be a little harder to hinge that without it being a very visible hinge there. I guess they could kind of have done the same thing as what they would have done with, say, an arm, for example. Like Freddy's arm is sort of the same shape as the worm. They could have put like a hinge right here. So like if his head, I'm kind of recreating this with a seven inch tall figure, but Say if this is the Freddy Worm, they could have done a similar work here where the back would have concealed the joint, see right there, and then you would have put a hinge right there where the joint could have bent forward, similar to what they could have done here. But I think what problems could have come from it, obviously it would have been more expensive to produce. The molds would have had to be two parts instead of just one main mold. And if, that may also throw out its, uh, its stability if you wanted to have it standing upright. Still a fantastic looking piece. I'm so thrilled that we got ourselves a Worm Freddy. Could it have had some additional posability? There is a good possibility that it could have, but it's still the takeaway from it is it's something that I really never expected I would ever see in plastic form. And NECA once again delivers fantastic work on Worm Freddy. I'm going to look at the uh, lamp, the street signs next because we really want to look at uh, TV Freddy at the very last here we have two versions of the lamp, the street sign here. I keep wanting to say a lamp post, the street sign. One is the regular street in the normal world. You can see Elm Street is featured on the top there, kind of uh, printed actually in white on the green here. You can see also the rivets there bolted in which the sign would have been attached to the rest of the post. Uh, the post is primarily all silver. Looks like it kind of gets a little bit darker down below. And of course it's attached to not quite the same color, a beige contrasting to that of the silver, but a really, again, neat looking sign. I guess they could have also made this into grass. I'm trying to actually picture where that sign would have been, whether it would have been on a grass a grass area. Maybe they could have put a little couple of blades of grass and stuff like that, but other than that, pretty happy with it. Then we have the Nightmare version sign, which I have so wanted for the longest of times. Here we have a much more distorted, don't worry, let me do the comparison for you, a distorted version of the sign. The shape irregularity of the of the uh, rectangle here is certainly more distorted than this one right here. Elm Street is also quite stretched out with some additional paint added there as well. It's definitely a more crooked, much more rusted street sign than, uh, than this one right here. Sort of still has the same beige 
Not the most interesting of colors, I have to admit, but still, it's something that has to be put in place. I guess they could also have done the same coloring as the rest of the, uh, the neck here in the silver. Why they opted for this color, I'm not really quite sure, but it's not really, again, something that you're gonna nitpick too much. At the end of the day, you've got yourself two really cool looking street signs. Then we move on to, I guess, the main star attraction. I mean, some of you could certainly debate the fact that the worm would be the main attraction here. But here we have TV Freddy. Now, scale-wise, I'm going to bring in, once again, the Part 2 Freddy. Just to show you, I'm going to move these arms just out of the way for one second. Just to show you that the heads are roughly about the same size. Proportionately, scaled-wise, they are accurate scale-wise to one another. Of course, two different drastic different head sculpts, one from the previous film and then one from the latter. Uh, assembly, like I said, for this one, the head just attaches into place. You've got the really neat looking TV set that if you tilt it slightly, it sort of has like the uh, the lines, the distortions going through this, the screen set there. I do like that a lot. This is the sort of thing that it doesn't come with any way to mount it. However, NECA did include an open slot where if you had it like a thumbtack or a nail or something that you could put on an existing wall, you just would simply mount Freddy onto that. I actually was going to, at the beginning of this review, just take one of the NECA uh, stands, the little clear stands, but uh, the neck is a little too small, the little peg on the end is a little too small that it didn't hold it properly so at the beginning of this review I just simply had it sitting on the turntable uh, let's have a look at his face we'll kind of again move his arms out of the way here face is good I feel like the expression is a little off here the top head the top head the top part of his head is actually really quite good regular Freddy and then they've added just a little bit of extra silver almost to like the top layer of the sculpt the more lower recessed areas are still kind of that pink color, but the silver over top of it is really only just making just the very surface of his skin, which is a nice blending transition from the TV set uh, silver or chrome right into then the neck. But it's, much, it's like the mouth that I feel is the one thing that needed to be changed for it. It's a fantastic head sculpt, but I think like the mouth is something that kind of like he's laughing like ho, 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 ho. that's not nice I, that's the only thing I would have changed to is, is probably in the mouth uh, he does have a couple of antennas on the top that are actually ball jointed I don't know how aggressive I would be with these ball joints like this one right here doesn't seem to want to move this one here moves fine so this one is the one I'm going to show you that it can move all the way around I mean this is it is still thinner plastic, so you gotta be careful with it. This one does have a lot of resistance to it. A lot of resistance tells me I should just leave it alone. Uh, as for the TV it's set itself, I don't know if you can see it, but I didn't even notice that that was in the movie. I would have to go back and look at it. It's a Kruger TV. Definitely would have to go back and look at that. The TV has some knobs. The knobs are not functional. You can't turn them. Nice. A kind of black dry brushing that they've added to the front of the TV just to give it its age. There's a little bit of like a wood paneling down below and you got a few extra little buttons and knobs and stuff like that. On the side is where you can see how the electronic wired mechanisms of his arms would have pushed their way out from the side of the TV causing an explosion and some charring to the side of the metal. You can see there with the nice Kind of dry brushing of the black that they've added there. The arms are highly detailed, having some individual wires, the red and the blue wire. There's a couple of little like knobs and buttons and stuff in there. This one here is a little orange knob. And again, all the things that would have been making up the circuitry on the inside of the TV has turned now into Freddy's arms. One arm is a regular mechanized grabbing hand. And then on the other side, we've got a metalized metal version of Freddy's claw. I really do like that a lot. Now, it does have posability. It hinges right here. You know, actually looking at this, this reminds me a lot of like the endoskeletons from Terminator. Uh, there's a hinge on the elbow. Um, you can rotate, of course, this up and down. And then the hands you can also rotate as well. 
Funny enough, I'm not actually as concerned with the uh, the fingers and the thumb as I am with the antennas. They're slightly a little bit more soft or plastic, but still, caution should definitely be made here. As I look through this, giddy as a schoolgirl, the fact that we've finally got ourselves accessories like this. I'm trying to think of what other accessories could we get for a Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, like, you know, setup. Uh, certainly there's a bathtub, but I mean, a lot of the accessories, if you will, future ideas, for example, would have to probably involve human characters. The TV can work perfectly fine because he hasn't smashed her head through the set yet that you could still accept this as a passable, okay, this is TV Freddy. But a lot of the other accessories you would think that should come with like a human character because that's the tie-in to that particular environment. If you guys can certainly think of any other environmental accessories that you would love to see NECA produce based on the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, certainly let me know down below. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this. It doesn't have certainly its supporting back to it. When NECA first released teaser pictures of this, uh, Freddy Krueger was mounted on the back of a wall. And I actually had asked in Twitter if the wall was going to be part part included. And that's one thing that it could have also done too. I know they intend that you could mount this onto a wall yourself just by using like the thumbtack option on the back. But really, if they had also just given you two pieces like Diamond Select does this as well, just like a flooring and then just something that sticks up, just snap them into place and then the whole back, it wouldn't have to be an overly complicated wall, but just it would have a textured sculpted back and then they could have, you could have had it where Freddy could have just attached to the back of it. It would only really involve two sheets of plastic, you know, two sheets of plastic that you're putting together. But NECA at the end of the day decided to just ultimately just have Freddy as a standalone that you can potentially put on display yourself depending on whereabouts you want to put the figures. This accessory set marks now the second entry that NECA Toys has handled for the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. The first one being the furnace, which I've looked at on this channel as well. The furnace, I have to admit, was a little disappointing. It didn't have the proper flame effects. It sort of missed some additional accessories that I think they could have included, like for example, Freddy's charred glove, which could have been inside the door. Could have had sound effects. I think the flame effect could have been a little bit better. But we move forward, as we always do in life, and this one is a far superior accessory set. This can now rival the stuff that Jason Voorhees was getting with the Camp Crystal Lake setup that we've already looked at before also on this channel. I think when I first saw the TV set Freddy, much like other collectors who are collecting NECA pieces, I was thrilled. I was excited for the fact that we got a Freddy Krueger, and even though he doesn't have a wall in which you can put him against, I guess the intent is you can put him on your own wall, just with the use of a thumbtack. The worm Freddy is big, it's garish, and it looks slimy, all a thanks to the folks over at NECA Toys with a great sculpt and great paints. Could the neck of Worm Freddy have some adjusted movement? A neck joint, if you will, similar to what we looked at with the arm of Freddy Krueger. I think yes. I think it still could have worked, but that could have also increased the price of production. NECA Toys, I know, wanted to produce a Worm Freddy, and by adding an additional joint to the neck where it would have moved it, not only would it have broken up the sculpt, but it also could have mean that this set would have been more expensive than what it was. I guess at the end of the day, I'm happy and thrilled for the fact that we got ourselves a Worm Freddy, even if he doesn't have any posability other than in his head. Some good news, though, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, you should be able to find it now at your local comic book store. And I want to say, like, the price point is around $40. It may vary from where you're finding it, but I think on average, this set is about $36 to $38.99, respectively. I think for what you're getting and for the fact that the Worm Freddy is as big as it is, I think you're getting as you're getting a good bang for your buck spending it picking up this set for yourself. It's a nice complimentary setup to kind of enhance your already existing Nightmare on Elm Street display. Today we were having a look and this fantastic accessory set from NECA Toys. This was the Nightmare on Elm Street accessory set, which included two street signs, one Nightmare, one regular, a TV set Freddy, and of course, Worm Freddy, which you probably can't see. He's way at the back. Oh yeah, there he is. <laughs> he was there the whole time. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other NECA reviews, there's a whole playlist just for that. If you also haven't had a chance, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. Certainly, certainly more videos will be coming your way. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.